I got an engine out over some mountains. Oh man, oh geez, oh crap. There's nothing I can do. My only option is to bail out immediately and film a YouTube video. I got a selfie stick, I'm out of here. It's my only choice, see you later. All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to True Crime Loser. I hope you're doing well. So, folks, today we're going to talk about old Trevor Jacob. In a few short months, we will all get to see how the dumbest, most outrageous YouTube saga of the past few years is finally going to come to an end. There's a lot of people interested to see how the Trevor Jacob story resolves after everything that's happened, and now here we are, a mere few months away. It's been a year and a half since Trevor Jacob crashed his small plane on purpose, claimed he had a catastrophic engine failure which forced him to dramatically jump out of the plane. He was already wearing a parachute and had a selfie stick. He filmed the whole thing, woo, for a stupid YouTube video on his channel that wasn't even good. During the year and a half since it happened, he was under federal investigation the whole time. And while under federal investigation, Trevor did a ridiculous Vice interview, 20-minute profile, where Vice straight up asked him, Trevor, did you crash your plane on purpose for YouTube views? And with a coy smile on his face, Trevor said, the world may never know. Really, Trev? The world may never know? Well, that didn't last long because three weeks ago, Trevor Jacob agreed to plead guilty, to sign a plea agreement. He's pleading guilty to one charge related to obstructing the federal investigation into his stupid fake plane crash. The plea agreement he's signing, he's agreeing that he crashed the plane on purpose for YouTube views, that he gave federal investigators the runaround that wanted to investigate the crash scene. They were saying, Trevor, where is the crash scene? We got to go out and investigate the plane crash. And he was going, I don't know. I don't know where it is. I just, I have no idea where I crashed. And while he was giving federal investigators the runaround, he and a friend with a helicopter went out, removed the wreckage, brought the wreckage back to Trevor's airplane hangar, cut the wreckage up into small pieces, threw them all away in different trash cans. Hey, looking good around here. So it couldn't be investigated. So he's admitting to all that, but it's just the one charge of obstructing the federal investigation. So now the ball's going to start rolling quick, though. So he agreed that he would plead guilty three weeks ago. He's supposed to appear in court any day now. I think it's either going to be this week or next week. And that appearance is just to officially put in the guilty plea. Then a short time after that, a month or two, I don't know, there's going to be a pre-sentencing hearing where they hammer out the details for the big official sentencing hearing. And then a short time after that will be the official sentencing for the one charge that Trevor is pleading guilty to, he's facing up to 20 years in prison. Damn. That's a lot. And I don't think he'll get anywhere near 20 years, but just to even have that big of a number as a possibility, I would say would be pretty stressful for old Trev, wherever he is. So that's what's going to happen in the next few months. I'm really interested to see. But let's go back and talk about Trevor's life leading up to making the really stupid video, life-changing, infamous video. You can kind of see where his head was. And then from filming the plane crash video to posting it on YouTube, there's a month in between there. So we'll talk about that time and then a little bit after he posted. It's one of those stories where when Trevor Jacob pressed the publish button on that YouTube, no, it's one of those moments where after that, his life went in a totally different direction forever forever but let's talk about leading up to that video when trevor jacob was 13 years old 
he became a pro snowboarder and was the next big thing in snowboarding, winning competitions, blowing everybody away. This kid is amazing. Sponsorships, the whole whirlwind professional athletes. Look at this. This is amazing. And boom, by 16 or 17, it's already over. And I had a lot of friends do, this is not, this is a common story. It really is. I grew up in Colorado next to all the world-class ski resorts and had a lot of friends just like Trevor Jacob. I know the personality type. And a lot of them had sponsorships at 14 years old and they're coming to school. It's like, oh my gosh, this guy is a pro snowboarder. That's amazing. But the injuries, they blow out the knee and they break the leg and they break their back and they all have double digit concussions. And Trevor said with the injuries and all the concussions, Trevor Jacob estimates he had at least 25 concussions during that four years. That's you can't do that. That's life changing. You're affecting your whole life. You're going to end up like a pro boxer where you can't even talk at the end when you, as you get older. So we had the concussions and you're always injured and being injured is depressing because you're on the couch and you're, you're trying to get over that. And the symptoms of concussion is depression so not only is it depressing to be injured but you also have a concussion which makes you depressed and trevor said all of a sudden at 16 or 17 the whole thing's over the pressure to win competitions was too much because you're sitting out and then finally you're healthy and you go i really gotta win now because i've been sitting out and now i'm healthy so the pressure to win the competition the injuries, the concussions, and all of a sudden you think, I'm a professional athlete. This is great. I'm a professional snowboarder. And all of a sudden you're 16 years old and the whole thing's done. And you're forced to find who you are after that. And a lot of times, and this is like the Bam Margera story too. He was a really impressive pro skateboarder around that same age. And then you get older and you get injured. And then all of a sudden, the being a pro athlete's over. A lot of times because drug and alcohol bursts onto the scene at that late teen, early 20s, really ending any possibility of still being a professional athlete so a lot of them trevor jacob included and i saw my friends on in the shred crew back in colorado do this they go from being a professional athlete you know living that life to jumping off the roof into the pool or crashing into a bush in a shopping cart or riding on top of a car that's going and jumping to the next car start filming kind of stunts like that which brings more concussions and everybody's once you crash into the bush and you're going ah uh, everybody's laughing and drunk but there's a sadness to the laughter and the whole scene gets dark it really does i've seen it before and so right at that time when trevor's trying to figure out what is his next thing in life you don't want to be jumping off the roof into the pool and doing that type of stunts you know what are you gonna do and so at right at that point though trevor became a youtuber so you can almost see him testing what's my next chapter gonna be what am i gonna do and he did the type of just stupid stunts for a while where he hits a ramp on a dirt bike and breaks his hand and he's doing all that type of stuff and one of the videos that trevor did that was successful way back when was a video where they installed a really loud train horn like in a car and they would drive past people walking down the street like looking at their mail or about ready to go in their car and as they drive past them they'd hit the really loud horn and scare them and that was the video they were just scaring people and getting the reaction well at the end of that video though Trevor got arrested, but it was just one of his friends dressed up as a cop, but he titled the video, Train Horn, We Got Arrested. And that video got like 7 million views. That was his big first, as a YouTuber, his big first successful video. And he's talking about that video in the Vice profile, and he's going, yeah, that video, I had no idea it was gonna get 7 million views, and the end was fake, it was a skit. We 
I had a friend come and, and arrest me, and I like to, pretty much said he likes to kind of do a little fake at the end to make it really entertaining, and if people are going to follow his life, he wants it to be really good stuff and entertaining, and him talking about that, like, yeah, it was a little skit, I think is the same thinking that caused him to think, yeah, it's a good idea to fake this plane crash. It'll be a stunt, and it maybe it won't be real, but it's a skit. But the difference is, Trevor, do your little stupid skits, you know? God bless you. But as soon as your stupid skit makes an airplane flying around with no pilot to crash wherever, could hit someone, could start a fire, it's a miracle that when the plane crashed, it didn't start a fire. The mountains in California where he crashed it are the driest, crustiest. The whole thing looks, if you even stared at it wrong, would just burst into flames. So I think in his severely concussioned head, he thought once he finally got to the plane crash video, the life-changing, stupid video is he thought yeah i'm gonna make it a, a skit element just like my really successful we got arrested video but anyway it, there's still many years before the actual plane video but then his next chapter on youtube is he starts hopping freight trains and watching this these videos is just sad because he went from a professional athlete living the healthy lifestyle to mid-twenties jumping freight trains. It's dirty, it's dangerous, it's uncomfortable, it's not even that cool. So he's filming these freight train hopping videos where he's like, I'm hopping on the train in Vegas and getting off in Utah. And he's telling the stories on these videos with this tone of voice like, oh, this is so crazy. You won't believe it. This is so gnarly. And that's the tone of voice he's telling the stories. But if you actually listen to the stories, it's like, that sounds terrible. You just got on the train in Vegas and it was horrible and uncomfortable and you were cold at night and hot during the day and it didn't stop where you wanted it to stop and you ran out of water and were super thirsty and then finally when it did stop you got off and went to the gas station and got a bottle of water. That sounds terrible. Who wants to live their life train hopping the videos didn't do that well and even if you do it once and it was it's a fun experience and you don't get your leg cut off and you see the sunset in the desert and you're on the train you're thinking wow this is really magical to do it again and again all right i'm going out and hopping the trains again gonna be filthy and thirsty and not gonna sleep good because it's just on a metal surface and those whole videos, Trevor, it doesn't look like a happy time in his life. It's getting definitely addicted to adrenaline. He calls it a dopamine addiction or adrenaline junkie. And they all have this attitude of we're going to charge forward and we're going to live our lives and I'm going to live life on the edge and we're all going to die someday. But today I feel more alive than I ever have before. But the problem with that lifestyle is inevitably they get really hurt doing some stupid stunt or wingsuiting or something. They break a leg, they break an arm, they get another concussion, and it takes a whole team of doctors to put them back together. And then their loved ones and friends and family to support them through that injury. The six months in bed, I'm depressed. And then right when they're healthy, See you later, everybody. I'm going to jump off another mountain with a nylon suit. Life on the edge. And everybody that put them back together and supported them during the depressing injury is left going, I, but we just, the, all right, I guess we'll see you again on the couch after the next horrific injury. Later, going to hop off a cliff. And so around young, but around this time, Trevor Jacob's best friend was a guy named Johnny Strange. And just like Trevor Jacob, Johnny Strange was a top-tier athlete. Johnny Strange's parents were world-class mountaineers. And Johnny Strange was the youngest person to ever climb all seven 8,000-meter mountains. 
That's crazy. And Trevor and Johnny are best friends and they're kind of adrenaline junkie drinking buddies in a way. You got to have a buddy to do all this stuff with. And so they're living the adrenaline junkie life. We're living on the edge. I've never felt more alive. And Johnny Strange was even more reckless it seems like than trevor jacob he was getting really into the proximity wingsuiting where you jump off in, with a wingsuit and the whole goal is to fly as close to the rock as possible that's how i feel alive the only way that i feel alive is if i fly next to a rock going 200 miles an hour and what's funny is they both have this attitude of we live life on the edge, never felt more alive. But as they're getting older, it would almost take more courage and more balls to face their life than off the cliff, their wingsuit. But Johnny Strange, his jumps are getting crazier and crazier. And Trevor's talking about even he and Johnny were like, dude, you got to cool it. And they're both really desensitized to all of this stuff and Trevor was saying even I was like Johnny slow it down do you have to get exactly right next to the rock maybe go away from the rocks for a few weeks and just bring the risk level down but it's like I the only way I feel alive is right next to the rock and it just keeps upping and upping to get that high going and it's like see that tiny gap in the rock it's like not really well anyway it's there i'm gonna fly through that today and sure enough like a lot of the wingsuiters at the age of 23 johnny strange hit the rock splat the wet crunching sound and so trevor is making the train hopping videos, who really cares at the end of the day? Then I went to the gas station and got a bottle of water and drank it. It was gnarly, man. And so Trevor loses his best friend. Kind of like the Bam Margera story a little bit, like professional and then loses a best friend and then drugs and alcohol and depression and all the concussion and it gets really dark. But all of a sudden, his best friend is gone and Trevor makes a documentary for his YouTube channel, the documentary of Johnny Strange. But it's well received. It's well done. He does well telling the story. It's an interesting video. I know the algorithm picked it up because I ended up watching it back when he posted it. Had no idea who Trevor was. So it was a successful YouTube video. And one thing that stuck out about the documentary of Johnny Strange is when he jumped off on the jump that killed him, another guy jumped right behind him and saw the whole thing. And the guy telling the story goes, yeah, when Johnny jumped off, his arm was like this instead of like this. And there was a little gust of wind and that was it. It's like Johnny Strange is a top tier athlete, one of the best at doing all this stuff. And all it took was an arm right here instead of right here and a gust of wind. And that's it. That is crazy. But anyway, the documentary was a well-received video for Trevor and it had layers of friendship and loss and it raised questions about exhausting a way of living and trying to figure out what am I going to do next and it had all of those layers and he got a lot of good feedback like this is good and this is a complete well-told story and so I think what happened is Trevor got all the good feedback for that story and it had pathos, it had emotion, it had friendship and love and loss and a lot of things that can make a good story. And I think, and he's probably thinking, the hell with the stupid train riding videos. Those are terrible to make. No one even really cares. All of a sudden, this documentary did well for him. And so that's when I think he had the idea in his head, a cool stunt would be me flying my airplane, oh, got an engine out, kind of like the skit when we got fake arrested and I got to jump out. That's a really cool stunt, but how I can add the emotion and the love and the friendship and a lot of the things that the, my last YouTube video, the documentary on Johnny Strange, I can add some of those elements and almost make it like part two of that video 
if I make the reason that I'm going out in the plane that's I'm going to crash on purpose is to spread my friend Johnny Strange's ashes because a lot of new people came to the channel because of the Johnny Strange thing. They got the story of their friendship. They got all learned up on everything about their lives and Johnny Strange. And then I think he thought, I'm going to do like the next video is now you, you heard the story of him dying. Well, now I'm embarking in the epic mission to spread Johnny's ashes on his favorite mountain in California. That's the reason. That way this video will have the same pathos and depth and it'll be great. And everyone that that came to the channel for the Johnny Strange documentary, they'll, they'll be like, oh yeah, I know this story and they'll get all attached to it. But that, once it all came out to be a fake, really stupid hoax, the fact that the whole thing, the whole reason that he tried to make that I'm embarking on this mission to spread my best friend Johnny Strange's ashes, it did not come out well. The video is bad enough, but the two things that make it infinitely worse is that he tried to make the whole thing, I'm on an epic mission, just to spread my best friend's ashes. It's like you did that, you connected that to your stupid hoax video. Also, the, the main part of the video was he got a wallet uh, endorsement for the video and the abruptness. He starts the video by going, my friend Johnny, who you guys all know, we got to spread his ashes and then it abruptly. And that's why you should buy this stupid wallet. And so it goes, it's like, are you just using the memory and the legacy of your dead friend to sell these wallets? It's not a great look. And then the other element that maybe is even worse than using his dead friend's legacy to make the video more full and good is he starts off the video by saying with just words on the screen and it says on november 24th 2001 i took off and to fly to spread my best friend's ashes the engine went out and there was no place to land he's already answering questions from critics but then he goes and i can't believe he added this part in he goes i don't i didn't know if i would have the courage to post this this footage, I didn't know if I'd have the courage, but I think that all pilots can learn from this. And it's like, you're gonna take on a didactic tone, pull one of the most dumbass moves in a video in years, but spin the whole thing. I'm actually a hero and very brave for even posting this and hoping all of the pilots out there, which pretty much every pilot is better and more responsible, let the evidence show, than Trevor Jacob. So to spin the whole thing, I think all the pilots out there could really learn from my situation, which we'll talk about in a second. The aviation community was not happy and I don't think learned anything. But anyway, so he starts it off like, I didn't know if I'd have the courage to even post this, but I do, I am a hero. This whole mission is to embark on spreading my friend's ashes on his favorite mountain. Woo, I love you, Johnny, woo. And that's the reason we'll, we're doing this whole thing. It's a good cause to spread his ashes. And that's why you should buy this stupid wallet. And then, He's up in the plane going, oh, it's a beautiful day. You can see the ocean. So let's talk about quickly the planning that would go into trying to pull off this stunt. The most important part is picking the location because he had to pick a location where pilots and federal aviation investigators would look at it and say, yeah, there is no way you could land there. So that's why I picked the mountains. It probably would have been better to pick the desert because it's easier for him to walk away after he skydives down and for a number of reasons, but the desert's flat enough you could probably land the plane. So the location, picking the location was everything for this and he still didn't really do it. 
after it was being dissected by the aviation community and everyone on YouTube, many people pointed out, oh, he could have landed there. That's a decent landing zone. A pilot even went up. They found the exact location where he bailed out and a pilot went to that location cut the engine and still had enough time to glide to an airport and even go further. And so to start out the whole video going, I didn't know if I would have the courage up. Uh, guess I do. And also hoping all the pilots out there can learn from me. All of the pilots out there completely debunked his entire scam immediately, figured out where he was, figured out where he could have landed even got to the airport so even though i think he really tried to figure out the best location all right who where could i go where no one could say you could have landed it there that's what he was going for so you got to pick the location the second thing is you got to pull off the acting which trevor jacob is a terrible actor and so i got an engine out oh man oh geez and it doesn't seem real at all and when an engine actually goes out, there's a whole checklist and procedures that you got to do. Well, he didn't do any of that, so that was very suspicious. But again, he would have to act through that whole thing. The door, before the engine cut out, he had already had the door open, which I wouldn't have noticed if not for the pilots on YouTube, the aviation community. They noticed that. Like, look, before he says the engine is out... He already has the door open. Probably it's an old plane. You don't want to cut the engine and then, all right, I got to go, and then go to open the door and the handle breaks off. And you're just stuck in the plane. So he had opened the door probably to make sure he could open it so the door's already open and he's going, I got a... Uh, I got an engine out and he just kind of tools around for a second and then very quickly jumps out of the plane. Well, now he has cameras all over the plane to make the YouTube video. And so he jumps out, pulls his parachute. He's got the selfie stick. As he jumps out, you can see that he has a fire extinguisher strapped to his leg. <laughs> and so he was... That wouldn't, imagine if you go to fly and the pilot comes out and he's already wearing a parachute. Trevor goes, I always wear a parachute. He's got a parachute on at the beginning of the flight and a fire extinguisher strapped to his leg. It's like, I'm not, I don't have that much confidence in you if you're preparing this much to go down. But he had the fire extinguisher and so he's floating down and he has to get to the plane to get all of the footage from the cameras and everything and so he's floating down watches the plane crash he crashes into bushes and again he just it's it's almost like a terrible b movie because it's all acting he's pretending that he was in this plane engine out had to bail out that's not really what happened so he's pretending and a lot of his pretending is just going ah uh, i'm in the bushes uh, just being uncomfortable he hikes to the plane it's unbelievable that it didn't start a fire one thing i don't get is when he gets to the plane he goes there's nothing in there i had a bottle of water in there but it's not in there it's like what is he is he trying to say that during the crash the bottle of water flung out and he couldn't find it or someone stole it i don't even really get that part but he goes to the plane it's all crashed right there and he goes thank god thank the universe thank energy or something and it just does not sound real at all and it's such a dumbass move and doesn't look cool. You would think someone jumping out of a plane and parachuting would look cool, but he doesn't do it doesn't. It doesn't look cool and it's such a dumbass move to try to pull off something like that. When he's finally to the ground, it, you're not really on his side. And I think in Trevor's head he thought, "All right, so the engine going out is kind of a skit, but once I'm on the ground, it's real. I'm actually going to have to hike out of there and I'm going to go through struggles and I'm going to get hot. My lips are going to get crusty and that's going to be real. I'm not faking having to hike out of the middle of the nowhere in the mountains. But the problem is it's, it, 
by the time he's on the ground, no one's really on his side. So when he's going, I'm thirsty, I, I don't have any service to call, nine, to call in a rescue, I'm in trouble. It's like, yeah, well, you jumped out of your perfectly good airplane in the middle of nowhere. You're probably going to have a terrible day. I don't know what to tell you. I don't feel bad for you. So he goes to the plane. I'm surprised he even got to the plane. I, I would have thought the thing would have flown a lot longer, but maybe he pointed it down. But anyway, he goes to the wreckage, and then after that, he hikes out, and he goes, he looks around with the camera, and he goes, see, there's no place to land. I would have freaking died. That's why I always die. That's why I always fly with a freaking parachute. And that just sounds like terrible acting. That's why I always fly with a frickin' parachute. I would have frickin' died. And then afterwards, it became his tagline, like, always fly with a parachute, just living a total lie. And I just keep thinking, from going to a professional athlete at 13 to this, it, it can get sad. It's not an easy... It's not an easy life to live, the adrenaline junkie. And so then he walks for eight hours. It's super hot. He finally gets to a stream and he makes sure he films himself drinking straight out of the stream. Like, see, this is real. I'm risking getting Giardia, but I have to drink. And then finally he finds some farmers and he goes, a car, a car. And none of it feels real. He filmed the video Two days after he filmed the video, he reported the crash, and then he gave the, he gave the investigators the runaround, telling them that's when he went and got the wreckage, brought it back, chopped it up, and there's a month from when he filmed it to when he posted it, and he knows he's under federal investigation. He's having to give them the runaround. Imagine sitting there and your phone rings, and it's the F the FAA again, or whatever, the Federal Aviation Association. It's the investigators again. You're like ending the call or saying, I don't know. I don't know where it is. Ah, sorry, I got to go. To think that all of that stuff was happening and he still thought, you know what? I'm going to post the video. I still think that that's a good idea. The judgment isn't there. Maybe the concussions or what. But he edits the whole thing together. The federal offense that he filmed himself doing from a whole bunch of different angles. And after he's rescued, a car, a car. And farmers pick him up. Then it, the, in the video, it goes to the next day. And he has a bunch of poison oak. And he's scratched up. And he looks terrible. And he goes, just because I had that day... I still need to complete the mission to bring Johnny Strange's ashes. And so we're out here. We're going to go parasailing. So he's back on a mountain and he parasails off and he's floating around and he's spreading Johnny's ashes. And he's going, woo, woo, I love you, Johnny. Woo. And to him, I think he's coming off as a free spirit living on the edge type person. But really, it looks like like a, just a depraved, end-of-the-line, late-stage adrenaline addict floating around with his head literally in the clouds. Woo! I love you, Johnny! Trying to figure out who he is next in life. And Trevor has been active on YouTube this past week. The video will first... He had the whole video up, and then when everybody started bashing him and countless videos started coming out saying this is totally fake and embarrassing, he took the video down, edited out the beginning where he's going, this whole thing is for my boy Johnny, and the end where he's going, woo, I love you, Johnny, woo, spreading the ashes around. He edited that out, so it went from a 16-minute video to a 12-minute video, and that 12-minute video... This past week, while I've been working on this video, it's been up, and then he'll take it off his channel, and then he'll put it back up, and then there'll be a bunch of comments missing, and then the comments will be back, and then the video will be taken down again. And as a YouTuber myself, whenever you're taking a video down or erasing 
frantically erasing comments and then putting the video back up and then taking it down again, it's not going well. That's not where you want to be as a YouTuber. But here we are a year and a half later after the whole thing, the ball's going to start rolling. So like I said, in a few short months, we will get to see what happens to old Trev for pulling off his hoax oh yeah official hoax plane crash official hoax vibes for trevor jacob i'm gonna cut it off there we'll follow it together i'll see you next time why stive and why shamita